Today is earth moving day. We're bringing in heavy equipment and we're going to work on the contour of the land here to create a drainage system that will pull water away from the house and get it out to the street where it needs to be after a heavy rain. Here's why this work is necessary for the long-term health and survival of the house. Now that most of the water issues caused by the roof are fixed, the next biggest problem is the water here at ground level. This is one of those design things I scratched my head over. When this house was added onto in the 1920s, this very narrow U-shaped area was created and tons of water pour off the roof here. Maybe 30% of the roof drains into this area and it, it causes a lot of problems. This U-shaped area is also the lowest spot in the yard. I think it may have been designed that way to help direct water towards the house to feed it into the cistern. Let me show you. Here's one of the downspouts to that whole house guttering system that I've talked about before. It brought rainwater down this pipe and into the house through the wall here and then onto the cistern. There was also a ground level pipe. I think it was put here to drain the water that collected on the ground in this U-shaped area. I've removed the cistern and capped off the pipe with concrete so there's no more issues under the house. If you're not familiar with the cistern, you can watch the I'm going down video and the water, water everywhere video to get up to speed. There's another thing you need to know about this area to understand what's going on. Galveston was struck by a major hurricane on September 8, 1900. It's considered the worst natural disaster in the United States. Various accounts put the death toll between six to 12,000 people between Galveston Island and the deaths on the mainland. There's a lot of great information on the internet about how the island was raised, and it was a pretty phenomenal feat, especially for the time. A seawall was constructed at the beach that was over 17 feet tall, and a sand slurry from dredges in the ship channel were pumped in. As the water slurry drained, it left behind the sand. The high point of an island usually runs right down the center, which is about where Broadway Street is. About 11 feet of sand was added directly behind the seawall and it tapered off until Broadway where it was down to just over a foot, right here where the leak house sits. So the floor of this basement is now about 15 inches below ground. You can imagine this would have caused some problems. They added this little set of stairs going down with a concrete edge around it to keep water out. That obviously didn't work well because at some other point in time they came back and put a concrete curb across the doorway itself. Let me show you a heavy rain in action. It'll make more sense. We've got a real rain. Just look at that water pouring off our new roof design and imagine that going inside the wall. Look how much of it there is and how hard it comes down. Okay, I'm finally here when there's enough rain to show you what's going on. Because the house all drains to this U-shaped area and everything around it is higher than the house, the water is just pooled up here like a giant lake. And it's almost about to run into the basement. This is what happens with a hard rain. It is up all the way to the top retaining wall of the basement. We also have the area of washout, which you can see now that we've removed part of the sidewalk to put in the electric service. You can see that that hole continues. That's where Ricardo fell in when we first found the sinkhole. So this is very unstable and unsafe here. So all this will get dug out today. And here's the piece of equipment that's going to get everything done today. It's a pretty good sized bobcat. Shouldn't have any trouble ripping out all the stumps and regrading everything. He came off that truck like a speed racer and immediately started knocking down little trash trees. Well, that's easier than chainsaw. <laughs> it was a little too fast. We had to stop and have a strategy session. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh. Then the stump removal started. These things were massive underground. I can't imagine having to dig them out. 
with my hand or pay for a stump grinder to come remove them all. There were so many. I'm guessing these were all trees killed by salt water after Hurricane Ike. He was so precise about his work, even getting right up next to other trees. He could just pop these stumps out and leave everything else undisturbed. The guys and I tried to work a little bit ahead of the excavation. There are a lot of buried things like flagstones and big rock borders from old flower beds, and I'm trying to save as much as possible to reuse it. We had to work fast because he was fast. The guys took a break to haul off some trash. Cleanup is always a constant problem around here and it drives me crazy. Then he was back to work with a different attachment on the bobcat to pop out some of the old concrete curbing that outlined the flower beds. And a few more stumps got removed. I was just mesmerized watching him work. He had brought this huge big truck that hauled away a lot of the debris. First all the organic matter and then the concrete. Once the stumps were out and things were relatively contoured, he started the fine cleanup and smoothing of the ground. I feel like I'm watching a dirt artist. He's so precise. The clean dirt was saved and we used it to put around the roots of the palm trees. You can see here that about a foot and a half of dirt was removed from this area. The dump truck is back so he's going to start loading up the brick rubble. This was so much better than the hand loading and dumping we had been doing. The vibration from this thing was also intense. I had a neighbor come over and complain that it was shaking her house so much that things were falling off her walls and shelves. I decided to set up a little science experiment and I was very proud of myself until I showed it to my husband and he informed me that it was a scene in Jurassic Park. I don't care. It was still cool. Then, I don't know how, but he got that big bobcat in and ripped up the concrete under the porch where the washout had been. The day came to an end. It was hot and very dirty work, but it was so much fun and so effective that I asked if he could come back and work the next day. I walked around and made a list of additional things to do. I loved all the different attachments. This claw made quick work of the trash tree debris. The big pile of dirt that we saved was moved closer to the house so it would be easier to move into the basement to fill the cistern. Then I thought it might be a good idea not just to put in a drain but to have a retention pond. Robert has this precision altimeter that he can use to check the level of the ground. So I picked a spot for the retention pond and we laid out a drain design. Before we started digging, there were some vines that kept hitting him in the head as he drove underneath. So he stopped and used the bucket as a lift to get up and do some trimming. I was actually going to ask him if I could do that while he was here, but he beat me to it. There's nothing quite like a good old fashioned machete. And within just minutes, before I could even get my camera out to set up and video, the hole was dug. Mother Nature decided how deep it was going to be because we hit groundwater and everything just turned into slushy mud. So the hole was as deep as it could go. What have I done? Now I have to buy grass. 
So that concluded another very dirty but extremely productive day here at the J.C. League House. It is really critical to get all of the drainage issues solved in this yard if this house is going to be preserved and stand for another 130 years. And it was actually kind of fun to watch the transformation. I still have about three-fourths of the yard to go, but this solved the biggest problem. That's it for today. As always, thanks for watching and being so supportive. This is a big project, but I do feel like progress is being made. Be sure to like and subscribe so you can follow along as this beast of a house gets tamed. And remember, we're a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to restoring and preserving this incredible house. Check out our website, leaguekempnerhouse.org, for ways to support us, such as making a donation or volunteering your time. We look forward to all of you being able to personally tour the house someday. Until then, you can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook for more photos and videos of the progress. If you're new, go check out our Season 1 playlist and start from the beginning. There's been some amazing work going on at this incredible house. Until next time, thanks for watching. The League Kempner House in Galveston, Texas.